Hello guys. In this lesson, we are focusing on the creation of the dynamic equation for crank and mill mechanism. Okay. Especially, we should add the wheel dynamics into the collaboration of the these two model to creating a car wheel dynamic one. Okay. And so. Firstly, we should summarize the free body diagram in here, the free body diagram can be given as like this one. We have a plane in here and so we have a wheel with the cylindrical mill notation, but this mill is a equivalent mill because the whole the inertia and spring factor is included or are included into the, the, this one cylindrical object okay and so if we have this kind of wheel and cylindrical mill and then we can write it down as we can apply the torque value into the, the, this mill and so we have also a theta m value is a turning point or the radian type of the mill characteristics okay and additionally we have also a wheel theta value or the degree because we have the inertia and plus the spin coefficients is included in the this cylindrical mill and so we have two different degrees or the angle of this turning point okay and so in order to create these things and we have two state variable and two state velocity variable and so in the state space form we have totally four value of this notation okay and so, <coughs> in the first place, we should drive the mill system model. And so, how can we do that? Normally, we can apply the torque value into this notion. And the torque is the total energy to the given the mill and wheel characteristics. And so... If we have this kind of wheel, and so the theta m has an inertia and spring factor in here, okay? And so theta m dot dot times i crank or mill should be added to this equation because the the total energy is consumed from these things and plus what the k equivalent value. K equivalent is calculated by the total stiffness factor of the mill. K1, K2 and K3 creates the stiffness of the this value of K equivalent. Okay? And so, how can we consume the torque value on this one? Suppose that the, if we have the theta M value for the crank and theta wheel value for the wheel the compression or the torsion factor is equal to what k equal times theta m minus theta wheel and so if the theta m is equal to the theta wheel and so this cannot be torsioned and so the k equivalent loads to zero force or torque value okay this is our first approach to eliminate of these whole things okay and so if we have this kind of information a disposition and then <coughs> we can write it down as in the theta dot dot form the theta dot dot m must be equal to torque divided by i crank 
minus theta m comes from it because this term should be written in the left hand side of this equation and so the k x divided by i crank should be written in here okay and so in the second place we should add the theta wheel value at the left hand side but the theta wheel is equal to what the x times 1 divided by r r is the radius of this wheel and so the directional position can be obtained by using this phenomena and then we can write it down as the plus k x divided by i crank times 1 divided by r times x this is whole the equation of motion related to the crank dynamics okay crank dynamics can be imitated or can be modeled by using this analogy okay and so additionally we should utilize the x value in order to obtain the directional or translational position deflection on this system or on the car okay and so this is our first algorithm or models in here and then we should proceed with the second one the second one is that the wheel dynamics can be written as the total energy comes from the mill which is equal to what theta m minus theta wheel must be equal to what i w is the inertia of the wheel and so theta w dot dot this is the inertia or preservation factor and so we have now the ct value theta omega dot because we have a friction on the plane and so we have also ff times r force comes from the friction factor and the moving object relation because if this term does not exist and so the wheel cannot move in the direction of translational motion okay and additionally we should take the h times r value because the mill has a mass as always as well as the inertia factor and so if we have the moving car in the translational position and so the mill characteristics or the mill mass should be included in the wheel dynamics and so the h term represents the directional translational directional position change on the car okay and so the mill mass should be <coughs> taken from by using this equation okay and so additionally we can write it down as the f f is equal to m w x dot dot and so h is equal to m crank times x dot dot okay and so if we change these terms with the total equation and then we get the total equation form as the i w times times or dot dot theta wheel dot dot and so this is wrong i w plus c t times theta w plus x dot dot comes from these things m w times r plus m crank times r must be equal to what k x times 
theta m minus theta v. And so, <coughs> in the second place, these whole terms, theta w dot dot, should be translated into the what? The x is equal to r theta v, and so x dot dot is equal to r theta double dot dot. And so, if the whole equation <coughs> is written in the form of the x dot dot terms, and then we will get the total equation as x dot dot times i w divided by r m w times r m crank times r okay and so x dot times ct divided by r plus x k equivalent divided by r should be equal to the what k x times theta m this is our final equation of motion okay and so <coughs> we have two equation of motion system characteristics in here and then we should represent it in the form of state space application because in the state space we can write the both these two system into a one a state matrices and b input matrices okay and so in the next session we will try to obtain this state space presentation form of system dynamics okay